Hello and welcome to another episode of my career mode series. Last episode we had a less than stellar transfer deadline day and we also continued our roller coaster of form. We had a win but we also had a draw against opposition that we really should be winning against. So I went into this game with Everton fearing the worst but the boys stepped up and delivered. We would have a hat full of early chances, Lucas Silva there missing a free header and Nathan Dyer would also come close but would ultimately have a shot blocked by Tim Howard, my fellow American. We would have another chance from the ensuing corner when Jerome Luma's curling effort would find the head of Augustine who would bounce it over the bar. But the opening goal would come sooner rather than later with Jerome Lumu manufacturing the chance, having a shot from the edge of the area, and it would find the head of Jesse Rodriguez who would have a rare header and would get yet another goal. The Rodriguez-Lumu connection would continue to threaten in the 33rd minute when Lumu would find Rodriguez. He would have a shot, but it would eke just wide of the post. But not to be forgotten is Nathan Dyer, and Augustine gives him a beautiful lofted ball over the top. He uses his pace to burn past Jagielka, cuts inside, has himself a nice little shot to make it 2-0. But Everton would answer just before the stroke of halftime. Leon Osman would feed it out wide to the prodigal son return Stephen Pienaar, whose cross would be botched by the red-headed stepchild Trimmel, and it would fall to the feet of the imperious Croatian Jelovic to make it 2-1. And that's how we would go into halftime. And besides Trimmel's inability to catch a ball going 2 miles an hour, we were sitting pretty. We would continue our first half form and find another goal 10 minutes into the second when Dyer would find Augustine, who would have a dipping effort into the bottom corner to make it 3-1 to Swansea. Some would think that with a 3-1 scoreline we should sit back and defend, but Jesse Rodriguez had other plans. After breaking the ankles of Phil Neville, he would make his way to the byline, have a nice stop and turn, and only Tim Howard stood in his way of a spectacular goal. And then he looked at the Everton back line and said, watch me do it again. Again, he shows that Phil Neville has no answer for him, cuts inside and has another shot blocked by the experienced Howard. But protecting more than one goal leads is something that Swansea doesn't do particularly well, and they showed that again here. Some ramshackle defending from our entire back line allows Darren Gibson to bulldoze through and have a very nice goal in the top corner to make it 3-2, and that's exactly how this game would end. Even though it is really annoying to be giving up more of these late goals, I'm super happy with a 3-2 scoreline against Everton. Uh, I would have been happy with just a draw because they are a quality, quality side. People like Jelovic and Fellaini make them a nightmare to play against, as we see in the Premier League in real life this season. We have been extremely inconsistent this season, and if we had any chance of getting that 5th place EuroLeague spot, we would really need to be winning games like Everton and start winning game in and game out. But we would have another really difficult game coming up against Stoke. They are a draw machine, especially at the Britannia at their home. And so any points picked up here would be a victory, but I would really like to come away with three. And after some kit selection headaches, we would be off. And it would be no surprise that the first chance of the game would come from Jesse Rodriguez. After some persistent pressing, he would have a fierce shot from outside the area bounce off the crossbar. Very unlucky to not add to his four goals in the league this season. Stoke would have a chance of their own when their 18-foot tall man mountain Peter Crouch would head just wide of the post. And Stoke would again threaten through the air when an overhead ball would find Peter Crouch and his cross would find Matthew Etherington, whose header would fly over the crossbar. But Stoke would be punished for not marking our top scorer, the league's top scorer, Jesse Rodriguez, and he would find the back of the net for his fifth goal this season to make it 1-0. And in the 37th minute, De Guzman tries his best J-Rod impression, but you know what they say, practice makes perfect, and he tries it again, this time finding the back of the net to make it 2-0. And after that strike, we would go into halftime ahead 2-0, a great scoreline against the goal-stingy Stoke City defense. But in the second half, much like the first, Stoke's strength and athleticism led them to be major threats in the air. And again, Peter Crouch would be very unlucky to have his header fly over the bar. 
but our luck would finally run out when a Peter Crouch header would dribble into the back of the net, a goal owed more to Trimble's incompetence than any skill from Crouch himself. Replays would show that Trimmel has the reflexes of a blindfolded sloth and would stand there and watch the ball for a full two seconds before making any kind of half-assed effort to keep it out. But despite that goalkeeping blunder, we would come out ahead 2-1 at the Britannia, an amazing feat considering Stokes' defense and our stuttering form. These well-earned three points would do wonders for our fifth-place push as well as the confidence of the team which had been suffering from a few draws in recent weeks. As you see here, Jesse Rodriguez deservedly got the Man of the Match award and that win puts us in fifth place exactly where we want to be. But there's no rest for the weary and we would have another match against 17th place Reading and you see there Michu is hoping to break his goal drought and doing so would do wonders for the team. Because right now we're pretty low in our striking options. We have Lumu who's had a couple of really good weeks, but we need Michu to be back to form so we have more goals in the team. And Reading is a team that is sitting just one place above the relegation zone, so they're really a team that we should be scoring goals against by the bunches. And in the first minute, an injury to left back Nicky Shorey opens up the floodgates of attack. Nathan Dyer cuts inside, picks out a pass to Michu. Michu has a shot. It is blocked, but Pablo Hernandez pounces on the rebound only to shoot wide. But Michu was determined to break his goal drought, and indeed he did. The ball would fall to the Spaniard's strong left foot, and he would dink it in off the post to make it 1-0 Swansea. And in the next few minutes, we would have chance upon chance upon chance, and one would fall to Michu, but unluckily, he would have another shot blocked. And the next chance fell to another Spaniard, Pablo Hernandez, and where a left-footed finesse shot probably would have meant a goal, he uses his right foot and powers it wide. But Redding would also have their chances and Trimmel dives to save an acrobatic effort from Kebe. Michu, who now remembers how to score goals, gets his second from a powerful effort into the top netting 2-0 Swansea City and we are looking good for the victory. Michu was looking to get his hat trick from 40 yards out and his powerful free kick would be held by the keeper. And with that effort, we would go into halftime up 2-0. But unlike the first half, the second half was one of very few chances, but that didn't stop Michu on his quest for a hat trick. Sadly, his sliding effort is blocked by the keeper, and the keeper also saves the rebound to put it behind for a corner. That corner almost finds the head of Michu, but is then blasted over by Wayne Routledge. Looked a certain goal, but that is how it will end, ladies and gentlemen, us above Reading 2-0. After that last performance, the press is talking about Michu, and that's good for us on two counts. One, he's a good player, and if he can keep scoring goals like this for the team, he can pull out wins for us. And two, if he keeps scoring like this, and for some reason we don't want him in January, his stock is just going to rise and rise, and we can sell him for a higher price than what we paid for him and put that money into better, younger players. And speaking of younger players, since we didn't spend those pounds on uh, players already around during the transfer window, I decided to go ahead and get a scout because uh, players that you scout can really become superstars pretty quickly. Uh, if they are 16, 17 years old, uh, you can put them straight into the first team. And it's also rewarding trying to build up those players that you yourself discovered. And so I got this American scout, and uh, it says he's arrived and ready to scout. So we're going to go ahead and send him out. And I tried to think of where would be best to send him. I could send him to America. That would be cool to have him uh, bring back some American players. And also, uh, if those players become superstars, they can contribute to the national team. And it would be really nice for me as an American to see the national team actually do something. But I decided to send him to France because, uh, I mean, there's plenty of really, really good French players. And they have a legacy of uh, producing really great talent and so I decided to send him there for six months just to look for anything and see what he could find. But in the meantime we have another league game against Wigan Athletic. Again this is a team that we should be beating easily and it didn't take us very long to get our first goal. Nathan Dyer just using his pace to burn past the defender gets to the byline squares it up to Jesse Rodriguez who is going to put that in the back of the net 10 times out of 10 to make it 1-0. 
and Wigan didn't learn their lesson the first time. Nathan Dyer making an identical run, and this time Leon Britton puts it in the back of the net to make it 2-0 Swansea. But Wigan would come roaring back after being burned by Dyer twice, and Franco DeSanto, after a horrible clearance, would get the ball and take a shot and luckily miss. But Trimmel was not happy with our clean sheet and would come out to make a clearance and instead of just clearing it first time, he tries to take a touch, tries to be a hero, and Franco DeSanto just volleys that in from long range. But despite that goal, they still don't have an answer for Nathan Dyer's pace and he squares it this time to T and Dolly, our right back, who for some reason is central and has a shot but misses. And just like that, we go into halftime ahead 2-1 against Wigan Athletic. Unsurprisingly, Trimble's goalkeeping did not improve from the first half, and when he tries to claim this absolutely tame ball, it somehow becomes a Franco DeSanto goal to make it to all. J-Rod is just sick of Trimble, so when he gets the ball, he says, just let me do the damn thing. He dribbles the ball. He's still got the ball. Cutting in. Cutting out. He doesn't believe in passing. He says, I'm going to take it all the way. Dribbling, dribbling, he still got the ball, still somehow got the ball. Why doesn't anyone tackle him? He goes outside, he cuts back inside, he's dribbling, he's dribbling, he's dribbling, he gets into the box. Why isn't anyone tackling him? He cuts inside, he has a shot, that's three goals for Swansea, we're ahead again. But J-Rod knew a one-goal lead was not safe with Trimmel between the sticks, so he draws the penalty. And who else but J-Rod himself steps up and buries that one in the top corner. A beautiful penalty to put us two goals up, 4-2 against Wigan. But we weren't done there. De Guzman dribbles down the touchline and decides to have a cross. You don't always have to cut inside. And Lumu has a headed goal. That's right. 5-2 against Wigan. We are safe for the three points. But who's our goalkeeper? Oh, now I remember. It's Trimmel. Gives them the ball three goals. And luckily, they don't have enough time to once again equalize, and we win the game 5-3. Lucky to get the three points. Trimmel was just determined to take them away from us. All right, guys, that's where this video will end. And just to let you know, I've started back my last semester of college, and so videos may not be going up every day. And if they do go up every day, they probably won't be at the same time. But I'll definitely try to get videos up, if not every day, every two days, uh, just to keep you guys up to date with what I'm doing in the career mode. Uh, all right, well, I hope you guys all have a great day and catch you next episode. Bye.